now. She was the world's foremost female marathon runner and held the women's world marathon record for a massive 16 years. Now superstar athlete Paula Radcliffe, MBE, wants to help you achieve some records of your own. Probably not quite as big as hers, though. Please welcome Paula Radcliffe. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. You look amazing. You look amazing. Thank you. So, now listen, you know, we all know you are a phenomenal runner. I know that you have this campaign going with Flora where you want to get the rest of us moving. Realistically, how are you going to do that? Because we're not going to be you, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, is this going to happen? We're, all, we're already doing it, to be honest. I mean, we've been carrying out this research for the, this is the third year, uh, and Flora commissioned the research on their annual Active Towns report. And each year, the average time spent active per day in each of the towns has gone up, and the average overall has gone up, which has been really encouraging, because we expected it to drop um, so after what's, lockdown. So what's been the reason for that, do you think? I think during lockdown, people valued the fact that they had me time, that they had quality time and they had changes that they made, um, maybe forced on them in the beginning, but they actually felt better about. And then as we've gradually gone back to normal, they fought to hold on to that time. So it has become harder. People say that now, this year, in the report for the first time, they said that they feel a little bit um, time starved because they don't quite have the time they need mm. to, to put into it. But they still are spending a massive, on average, across the UK, 46 minutes. Wow. So, um, obviously, you know, we're not all going to run a marathon. I'd eat a marathon. That's one for my, <laughs> <laughs> one, one for my age group. Um, but what, what are you encouraging people to do to, you know, how to get started? I think really it's about making those little changes. So it's about making those changes to your diet as well, making sure that you're eating more healthily, that you're including the healthy fats um, and the vitamins across the board. Um, and then little steps each day. So it can be just taking the stairs a few floors uh, when you're going to work. It can be walking a dog. It can be meeting a friend and gradually building up towards a couch to 5K type thing. Or getting the family involved together is a great one as well. And that's one of the things that I think certainly I really valued in lockdown was that you've got time to spend real quality time with uh, the family and keeping that up afterwards is something yeah. I've worked on. Well, I'm looking at it from the other point of view because I think the great thing about walking or exercise is you don't have to be with anyone and you can <laughs> <laughs> do it all by yourself. <laughs> and I've always kept pretty fit, uh, but now I'm in my 70s, I'm concerned that I read, like, in, the, in all the newspapers forever on their health, uh, in their health sections, showing how to stay fit in seven minutes a day or here's four hacks you've got to do to stay fit to build your core. And then I would normally disregard all this, but every now and then you look in the mirror and you think, oh, yeah, I've got the roll in the middle. <laughs> I better... And I do walk, you know, every day and, and do the minimum. But last week I read a, a series of a, a, a exercises in a well-known tabloid that promised me that if I did these exercises for seven minutes a day, the basic ones, that I would get fitter. And I started doing them. I put it, I stuck it up in front of me on the wall. I got my stopwatch and I started doing them. The first thing I realised was that I had the trainers on that were slippery. <laughs> So the first exercise, the skiing one, I nearly <laughs> broke my neck on the chair. I fell over. The thing, the point that I'm trying to make is that actually if you want to firm up your body shape, you do need somebody to check you're doing it correctly. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I mean, that's why I think that we, we talk about the fact that walking, running, biking are the easy ones to do yes. because technically there's not a lot you can get wrong there. It is kind of basic one foot in front of the other or pedalling. Um, but you do need some technical advice if you're going to go into the other ones just to make sure you're not straining different areas, particularly if you're coming back after childbirth or something like yeah. that. You need to make sure that you're using the right stomach muscles. There. And you need the right shoes. I mean, yes. I'm not talking about... <laughs> I, what I'm saying is you can't cycle in flip-flops. <laughs> no, no, you absolutely or, can't. Or, you know, deck <laughs> shoes or, or sliders. Because I see people cycling past my house on those electric bikes and sliders on the feet. And I just yeah. think, that's right. nuts. And you, you got into fitness and from a very young age and you're amazing. I watched you and I absolutely think Thank you're brilliant. You. 
Um, but you also said that it can be really helpful for your mental health. I know yeah. you really, it, you something you really clang to when you were going through difficult times with your daughter. Yeah, and I think um, probably because it's something that I've done all my life and it's something that I really started doing because I loved it mm -hmm. and it remained that all the way through. But it's developed into kind of my meditation. Like, I don't do meditation or yoga or anything like mm -hmm. that. I go for a run. Um, and that is my kind of thinking time, putting everything in perspective. It just, everything feels a bit more manageable, a bit more doable while I'm running. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it's kind of become a little bit of a, a coping technique as well. So when I lost my dad and when my daughter was ill, that time each day just to put things in perspective, think things through, uh, talk to my dad sometimes. T tell us about Isla and, and how she's doing. So she was 14, I think? She when... was 13 when she 13. was diagnosed. Yeah, she was with... 14. Um, with a, a malignant germ tumour on her ovary. Um, and so that was picked up very, very quickly. And we went to see the paediatrician, I think, the first thing Tuesday. And the following Wednesday, we were already starting chemotherapy. Um, and she went through the three rounds of that. It shrunk the tumour. It was so scary really for well. her and you, yeah. though. Yeah, I think for all of us. But again, it was such a great team. I mean, from the beginning, just telling, telling them the important things. This is nothing to do with where you've grown up. This is nothing to do with um, phone masts or anything that you've eaten. Um, and it can be treated. And this is the plan. I think for me, certainly having a plan really helped and then you see the plan working because you see the tumour shrinking um, and, and then two years on now two years how, on, how is she, she has now? checks every three months which are hugely reassuring it can be picked up on a blood test as well there's certain markers in there so that's a really good check that she has her hair's growing back because um, that was one of the most traumatic things um, and yet yeah, she did brilliantly in her exams this summer and um, so really proud of well her. Done, she's overcome it. <laughs> yeah. yeah well yeah. done Excellent. Isla and you're living in France? Yes, yeah, yeah, we were all the way through. Um, so, yeah, the, the, we were really lucky. We were very close to one of the top hospitals in, in Nice, in Longueville hospital, hospital, and they treated it really well all the way through. Paula, you're talking a lot about the benefits of, how, of, of running an exercise. Of course, we can recognise mental benefits, physical benefits. What's your advice for people with any kind of disabilities that want to get into activity a little bit more and feel that they just don't know where to start? I think now, um, if I think back to kind of when I was a kid growing up, going again, looking at different types of exercise available, the range now and the scope is so much more diverse uh, and available to everyone. Mm. I mean, I think what people like... Tanny Gray Thompson and David Weir, John Boy Smith have done kind of their exploits in the London Marathon, Commonwealth Games, and, and other ones. And then even just this week, I took my, my son to a skate park uh, and there was a little boy in a wheelchair there, all decked out, helmet and pads. And his parents, they were working harder than he was to get himself into the top of the ramp and letting him go down the ramp. Mm -hmm. And they're just I just thought it was so great that that was accessible for him to do. He was absolutely loving it. Mm -hmm. As I say, it was a full workout for his parents to get him <laughs> up there, and I really applaud <laughs> well, them. It's been absolutely great brilliant. to see you. Thank you so much for, for coming in. Good luck with the campaign. Uh, you. Are you jogging back to France? Well done to you. Oh, well, well, thank you fans. very, very much. And I've, I've learned a lot uh, in that interview, not least from Janet. Don't ever cycle in flip flops. <laughs> <laughs>